Hello and welcome to the TMZ podcast. I'm Charlie Cotton. I'm Charlie Neff. And today we got more Britney. I love it, more but this Britney. is actually kind of sad stuff. But well, it's all kind of sad stuff, to be honest. I know. There's a lot, a lot happening, and we have all the details for you guys. We're also going to cover Kendrick Lamar just put out a new diss track like half an hour ago. I know. Another one, back to back. I am pretty into this one, actually. Oh, okay. I like it. Can't wait to get your take. <laughs> okay. Tiffany Haddish is going after her trolls. I love this. I love everything about this. Uh, we'll also talk about Halle Berry. She was on Capitol Hill shouting out, I, I have, have menopause. menopause. <laughs> and we'll finish by discussing some Gypsy Rose stuff. But to begin with, Britney Spears, she got into a huge fight with her boyfriend, Paul Solis. Is that how you pronounce it? Uh, Paul Solis. Paul Solis. And paramedics were called. Apparently police were there at some point. Yep. Uh, sh they got into a physical altercation yeah, with her boyfriend. It was a wild night. So on Wednesday late evening, Brittany was with Paul Solis at the Chateau Marmont. Very fancy hotel here. A lot of history. A lot of dark history has happened at this hotel. That's where Josh, uh, which Josh was it? Belushi. That, that's Jim Belushi. Oh, Jim Belushi. Pat. Josh Hartnett had oh, diarrhea. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> wow, this is a throwback from your tour days. <laughs> yeah, that was TV We mentioned that stuff. on the tour. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so they were there. Apparently something had happened in the lobby. There was some kind of disturbance there. And um, hotel guests actually called police, basically saying that a woman matching Britney's description was harassing guests, was acting erratic. So cops threatening, came. Threatening employees. Threatening, threatening hotel guests yeah. and employees. Um, and But police came. They didn't find any disturbance, and they left. But then Brittany and Paul, her boyfriend, retreated to their hotel room later that evening. And apparently there was some kind of physical disturbance that happened between the two of them. Mm. Unclear what exactly happened, but we knew that Brittany had somehow hurt her leg or her foot. Um, and she was apparently outside of her hotel room suite, like in the hallway area, where hotel guests believed she was having a mental breakdown. And so paramedics were called that right. time, which Brittany has addressed herself. Um, she posted about our story, first saying it was fake news, but then goes on to say that she does, in fact, have a foot injury and showed some photos and a video, which we'll show you guys now, of her foot. Um, she said that she twisted her ankle, but claimed that paramedics showed up to her, her hotel door illegally. How, how is it illegal for, for you to hear a disturbance? And it, it ends up being you know, a medical issue. Look, you, you see her foot. Her foot is like swollen beyond looks belief. Horrible. Looks horrible. How is it illegal for paramedics to knock on the door and say, you okay, miss? It's not. Okay. So what is Brittany? And I'm not exactly sure when she says the news is fake. I'm not exactly sure what she's referring to because she didn't say what is incorrect. And, you know, keep in mind, th these are, we've confirmed these sources mul multiple times. It's not, it's not fake. These, this she, information. She thinks that the way she got the foot injury was she was just like leaping through her hotel room, like being all funny and silly. And that's how it happened. And there was the, the fake news part to her is that there was no physical altercation. There was no fight. But I, I think that if, you, if you're staying in a crowded hotel with rooms side by side and you're loud, people can hear if shouting's going on. Like right. they can hear if you guys are like getting angry at each other. Mm -hmm. So I don't really think I believe Britney's side of events that much. But out of all of this, her her big resolution is that she's going to move, move out to of Boston. Yeah, move out of L.A. <laughs> that was definitely a left turn. Unclear if she's actually going to do that or not. Um, but Charlie, did you, did you see the photos of her that were taken by paparazzi outside of the hotel? Yeah. They weren't sort of flattering or really, really took you back to 20 to 2007. Right. Where she's, she's out of outside this hotel. These were just on Wednesday night. You guys, she's holding a pillow. She's got a blanket around no her. No shoes. We're told that, you know, uh, that officers that were there thought she was crying. It appeared like she had been crying it just kind of makes you think back to some of those wild videos. You remember the stretcher video? Yes. The umbrella oh, video. Umbrella video. The Free conservatorship. Head. Yes. And, and I just want to end on this with Britney's story. You are still part of the Free Britney movement. 
You well, still think it's a good idea that she ended the conservatorship? Well, at, I don't at, what, think... at what point will you say, look, maybe is, is it? Will it take her dying? Like, at what point will you I, say that I'm maybe against, it was for the best? I'm against being a prisoner, and if she doesn't feel like she, if she's in a conservative conservatorship and feels like she's being held captive, that is a lose on the conservatorship. I feel like you can have a normal life ha- and have a mental illness without being in a conservatorship. But she can't, clearly. Well, look, I just think she doesn't have the right people around her. I think She's that, been getting rid of all the people around I her. I do think there is some kind of middle ground. You don't need to be as extreme as a conservatorship. But obviously what is happening with her right now isn't working, right? We're seeing in her in a horrible state. Nobody wants to see Britney like that. But I think there is some kind of middle ground. What that is, I don't know. I do think she needs help, but I do not think that that conservatorship was good for her. Because if you look at it, look at how she came out of it. Well, she came out of it and then distanced herself from everyone and had no one around her. I think that clearly the conservatorship, even though she didn't like it, I think most people who are in conservatorships probably don't want to be in it, but it's, it's, it's for your own good. Okay. On to our next story. Yes. Kendrick Lamar just released a new Drake diss track. It's called 616 in LA. It's like playing off different titles that Drake gives his songs like 9am in Dallas, 5am in Toronto. Well, Kendrick really came for Drake in this one. It's back to back now. So the first one came out and now this one comes out days later. It's mostly about how... But Drake did that before. Drake, I think people do that often. They release yeah. multiple at the one time. Yeah, back-to-back diss tracks. Um, it's mostly about the traitors and moles that Drake has in his camp and also talks about how Drake wanted to pay people to dig up dirt on Kendrick. Right, which I kind of love, low-key love this, because you remember how earlier this week I had said... All this rap beef, it's like giving like housewives drama where it's Mm. like you have plastic surgery, you're on Ozempic or whatever. Well, now it's like your camp, they all gossip. Like Mm. your camp, they gossip so much. (laughs) It's just like, what are we doing here? But yeah, that's exactly what, what Kendrick is accusing Drake of. He's saying that everybody in your camp, they just gossip about you. They don't actually like you. <laughs> I, I like that, that none of your <laughs> friends actually like you. They talk bad about you yeah. behind your back. That I think that kind of stings in a sort of gossipy housewives way. Yes, Because exactly. then you start questioning it, like, who's the snake? Like, they want you to grow up. Like, what are right. we? It's, it's funny, but... I thought it had a good beat behind it, this one, too. Yeah, like, it did. It I was did. bopping along. I, I really, I mean, I'm biased because I don't really like Drake and I quite like Kendrick. And so... Well, it's different different takes, different kinds of music, right? Right. It, it is. But I just think like, uh, Drake just like has got this one lost, I reckon. I, I don't think yeah. he can come back and like compete with Kendrick, one of the best rappers of our generation and, and, and diss him in a way that's going to affect things. I mean, I'll be happy to be proven wrong because this beef is going to continue. But um, man, this one was a banger. It was pretty good. But I do want to see if Drake does respond and if he doesn't maybe he's just going to release some new song like about you know drinking in the club like yeah. maybe he'll just completely ignore it and right, get right. back to the old stuff okay if you have issues with Tiffany Haddish <laughs> yeah don't leave a dm or don't like comment on her photos because at least not from your public account she will track you down yes that is what she says she's doing she says i've learned how to find people's information i pull up the credit report police re- records you can do that for a dollar 99 uh, she says, sometimes <laughs> I get so mad that I'll get their phone number and I'll just call them. Wow. That is a wild. And she th- says that it really throws people off guard because they're like, wait, this is Tiffany Haddish calling right. me. Um, but it like really disarms them, you know, and there's so many times I'm sure you've gotten hate on social media where like random people will slide into your DMs and just say something like so nasty. And then you're like, God, if I saw this person in public, would they actually say that to my True. face? And it, it can get like so irritating, but I mean, she's a huge celebrity, so I can't even imagine some of the hate that she gets. And people will just say stuff that maybe isn't even true. They're just out there to like sting ya. True, but she has done some pretty weird stuff that I think merits, you know, a bit of criticism now and again. Yeah, criticism, but not trolling hate. Right. But also, what's the number one thing that bullies want when they bully you? A reaction. And giving them this reaction where you call them up like, hey, this is Tiffany Haddish. No, but I think the reaction they're expecting is just you to respond like 
publicly, right? So you can kind of get into this like Facebook war. You see all the people on Facebook. They're like fighting on, or even on Nextdoor, you yeah. know, those apps. Everyone's always fighting on there. Uh, no. But if someone called you on your personal cell phone number when you never gave it out to them, that would be like, whoa, this is next level. I know, but I think you'd consider it somewhat of a reward for good trolling. <laughs> yeah, true. Like, don't you think? True. Hey, good investigative work too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. We should we should get Tiffany to work for TMZ <laughs> and just like know. find the dirt on people. <laughs> okay, on to our next news. Halle Berry shouts out on Capitol Hill, I have menopause. This is because uh, she says that her doctor, when she was like starting to have menopause, couldn't even say the word to her. Yeah. Like she had to say, oh, you mean I have menopause, right? Because apparently it's like a dirty word that men don't like to say and doctors yeah, don't like to say. Too. It's It's got a stigma, right? It's like something that happens to every woman. It's a midlife thing, very normal. But as a woman, you think, wow, I'm getting older. My eggs are shriveling up and dying. You know, there's a lot of things that are happening that makes you internally feel like kind of bad about yourself because the world is not nice to old women. Is that all. right? No, not at all. People are nice to you? Oh, rude! <laughs> I'm not going through menopause. Not yet. But right, right. I mean, good on good on her for taking this fight to, you know, the capital. She wants a $275 million sort of women's health act. Uh, to ad advance menopause care. Yep. I think it's great when a celebrity, you know, steps out of their lane and, and yeah, she waves her hands up in the air and says, I've got it. Yep. Other, every woman gets it. And it's great to hear from Halle Berry because she's so beautiful. Even in, in this clip, she looks like she could be in her 30s. Yeah. You would never think she is her age. Um, so I think women can really like relate like, wow, if Halle Berry is talking about it, maybe it's not so bad for me. Totally. Relatable. Totally. All right. Tell me about your night with Gypsy Rose last night. I saw like photos and videos of you guys <laughs> getting and out now, of an SUV. Yeah, and going oh my God. Surf. The paparazzi video. I'm deceased. <laughs> I'm yeah. So Gypsy Rose, uh, like we told you guys, she came into LA. She's been out here promoting, um, her second season of her lifetime show, Gypsy Rose Life After Lockup. Um, and yesterday she had a big free day in LA. She took the TMZ tour. Wow. Because that's what people do when they want to see all the sites. It was her first time ever to California. So she, of course, wants to see all the historic spots in LA. Um, she went to the beach for the first time ever in her life, put her toes in the sand, never oh. seen the ocean before. Mm. Um, and she said it was very cold. But <laughs> yeah, we went out to dinner, um, me, her, and her stepmom, Christy. Uh, they picked the dinner spot, which was Sir Restaurant, Lisa Vanderpump's restaurant. They're big fans of Vanderpump Rules and mm. Lisa Housewives. Maybe she could be a new cast member. She could hook up with Tom Sandoval or something. <laughs> I would not be surprised if they like got her on that show right. in some kind of capacity. Um, actually, and one of the Vanderpump cast members, Stassi, she had said that she's a distant cousin or r relative of Gypsy Rose. So there's all oh. these connections. Um, but yeah, guess what she ordered for dinner? Um, crab think, legs. I don't think they have crab legs there. They have crab yeah. cakes there, but she didn't get that. Think of somebody that's been, you know, in, in behind bars for eight and a half years. Okay. What would you desperately want to eat after your release? Spaghetti bolognese. That sounds really good. <laughs> she got a Sprite and a big bowl of French fries. That's all. That is all. She did have a dessert, too. They brought out, like, a bunch of sparklers for her. Like, welcome to L.A. Wow. And she ate the, it was a brownie and some, like, chocolate mocha ice cream. Was everyone at the but restaurant looking around? Fries. Oh, my God. Everybody was coming up to her. The servers, people that were there just, you know, having long talks with her. Like, heard about your journey. You're so brave. Total support. Total support. Because Total I would have thought she might get some people on the other side who are like, you're, like, super famous now because you help murder your mother like it's not like you know you just went viral for singing a great song it's, right. it's quite a dark reason she got so famous or infamous she is a controversial person without a doubt and she knows that as well but i think a lot of those people that want to criticize they do it behind a computer screen okay. you know what i mean not in public all right, hit us with your Today in History segment, the segment that is just like taking over the over. world. over. Everyone just loves this You segment. know what? You criticized this segment, but you told me you wanted to start the show I think with it's this funny. segment. I think it's funny. Okay, you're, you're okay. giving facts that, uh, like, who cares about? <laughs> like, it's kind of... People care. You All know right. what? You can learn something from this show. All right, Today in History, 
1997, the notorious B.I.G. song Hypnotize became number one, the number one song in the country. All right. R.I.P. B.I.G. R.I.P. <laughs> B.I.G. Uh, Spider-Man in, two, in 2002 was released today. That was the famous one with uh, Tobey Maguire and Kirsten Dunst. Remember when they kissed Upside Down? Mm, that was That iconic. was a classic. That iconic. was a classic. Everyone tried it after that. Yeah. Did they? Yeah. You Wait, see what? what? It, it feels different kissing Upside Down than like... Wait. You and your husband should try Stop it. Stop right now. You and your husband should try it. Okay, is kiss. this a thing? Let us know in the comments. Or is this just a Charlie Cotton no, weird, weird thing? The mouths don't know how to move. Okay, okay I don't want to imagine you kissing somebody. <laughs> oh, that's me. <laughs> that just makes me want to throw up. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, and this day in 1952, the Kentucky Derby, which is coming up this weekend, uh, the most uh, prestigious American horse race, was televised nationally in the United States for the first time. Not interesting. The Kentucky Derby. I love the Kentucky the big hats, all this. Yeah, no, I love show. the Kentucky Derby. It's just like, oh, it was first televised in. Okay, get us a better fact. Oh, oh, okay. And then lastly, in this day in 1492. In 1492, that takes me back. Okay, why do you know 1492? We learn a song here in the in the states about 1492. Is that when like Christopher Columbus, Columbus came to America? Blue. Wait, oh. hold on, hold on. In 1492. European explorer Christopher Columbus encountered the island of Jamaica, which okay. he actually named Santiago. Oh, have you been you to go. Jamaica? Uh, no, no. The Car- uh, Caribbean. I like the Car- Caribbean. I used to support. Is it the- Caribbean or Caribbean? I never know. It's Pirates of the Caribbean, but then I also heard it was actually just Caribbean. I support their cricket team. They're called the West Indies. They've they got a cricket team. They're you very are good cricket. so Australian. Cricket? I used to support West Indies over Australia if they play each other. Wow. Wow. Yes. Were they pretty good then? No, I just like oh, their what vibe. The heck? Richie so Richardson. you want to support the winners? Nah. I like being different, you know? <laughs> okay, going against the grain. <laughs> All right. Thank you for your very first week as co host of oh the Team Z podcast. Thank you. I've had such a fun time with you. It has been a blast. And we have a very big interview coming out over the weekend, actually. Yes. Yes. We, can we say? Yeah, say it. We interviewed Craig David. Yes, and he had Can some you very. Can me in? Or Monday, Monday we were making. Drink, uh, oh, sorry, oh, yeah, I got that's the a, words that's wrong. second verse. I got the words verse. wrong. Sorry. So <laughs> sorry, good. Love him. He was amazing. <laughs> Said some bombshells. This yeah, is an interview did. you guys won't want to miss. So make sure you check it out. Okay. Have a great weekend. You too, guys. Have um, a great weekend, Charlie. We'll see you on Monday. Woo woo. Bye bye. bye.